At this time, if you are able, I invite you to please kneel. Let us pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper he shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of all of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations, because of him kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet in our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that make us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. 
but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked in a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses 
but one who has, been similarly, has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus, He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he, asked, he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, Let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. The maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, He said, I am not he. I am not. 
Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against uh, this man? They answered and said to him, At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and, and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have a right to execute in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew. Your own uh, nation uh, and uh, chief priests had uh, handed, you handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a, hand, you, you have a, a custom that I release one prisoner over at Passover. Do you want me to release the, to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, 
and they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I, I am bringing him out uh, to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and cru crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak, do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes the king. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away! Pilate said to them, Shall I uh, crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let us not tear, but cast lots for it, to see who In order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, 
He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now, in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Good Friday, and the, the day that Jesus died on the cross. Um, today is not a day to feel good, um, it's a day to feel sorrow, um, to feel grief, to feel the anguish of Jesus on the cross. Um, today is also a day of fasting, um, a day of abstinence. And today is an opportunity to give thanks and praise, um, a day to feel loved, um, a day to absolutely um, feel loved. Um, 
We're here at the, the Chapel of the Holy Cross, and it's very appropriate that we would celebrate um, Good Friday here at the chapel. Um, we have healing masses um, here at our chapel um, frequently, and Good Friday is a day when healing um, is released um, all throughout the world. Um, it's a day when we can receive healing, and I want to just reflect on that with you a little bit um, t this afternoon. Um, in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, it says, He was pierced for your sins and crushed your iniquity for your iniquity. He bore the punishment that makes you whole. And by his wounds, you were healed. Of course, the prophet Isaiah was speaking hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. But he was talking about who the Messiah would be. And this famous part of this verse, by his wounds you were healed, um, is so, so important for our understanding of who Jesus is. And because he was pierced, um, he was crushed, um, he bore the punishment that, that you and I deserved. Um, by his wounds, um, you were healed. Um, by his blood, you are redeemed. And um, by his sacrifice, um, you are made whole. And by his surrender um, to his Father's will, um, the whole world is changed forever. And so we make th this connection um, between the cross and healing, um, it's actually an explicit connection. Um, he is wounded, and I am healed. Um, he is scourged, and I am healed. Um, he is crowned with thorns, and I am healed. Um, he is abused and tortured, and I am set free. Today, is a special day where we celebrate all of this, where we give thanks and praise to God for sending um, his son, Jesus. When we think about healing, there's really three kinds of healing. Generally speaking, there's physical healing. I know some of us have come here today desiring um, physical healing. Um, there's the healing of our hearts, um, the healing from past wounds, past traumas, healing from abuse, and there is the healing of our souls, our, the healing of our souls. And when we think about the healing of our souls, it's, it means going from being away from God um, to being close to God. Um, it, go, it means going from being separated from God um, to uniting ourselves to God. Um, it means going from being in the, in the, in a, the risk of eternal damnation um, to being on the path um, to eternal life. And today, in a special way, is about healing for our souls. You know, healing, the kind of healing that I'm trying to describe to you, is actually a gift. Um, it's undeserved. Um, it's unearned. Um, it's something that we're given. Um, redemption and salvation are gifts. Um, they're undeserved, unearned. And God's mercy and forgiveness is a gift. Um, God's love and goodness are gifts. Um, he freely chooses to give these to us, um, to you and to me. Jesus says in the scriptures, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all you who are weary, and you will find rest for your soul. Come to me, all you who are weary, all you who are exhausted, all you who are discouraged, all you who are broken, all you who are furious, all you who are afraid, all you who are sad, um, all you who are doubting, um, come to me, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. You know, many came to Jesus when he walked this earth, 
um, wanting healing. Um, they came to him, and we really don't have a, a time ex except when Jesus walked away from a crowd because of their lack of faith. Um, all the other stories, um, there's no instance where Jesus says, no, sorry, I can't heal you. Um, he never says, no, sorry, I don't want to heal you today. I'm tired. I need to go home. Um, he never says, get away from, from me. He never says, you've got the wrong guy. Um, each and every time, um, he brings about healing in people's lives when they come to him. And, you know, all kinds of different people come to him. And it's um, not true that Jesus is repelled um, by our wounds. Um, he's actually drawn um, to our wounds. Um, he's attracted to those um, who are wounded. And so when we have wounds of abuse from others, wounds of self-harm, wounds caused by sin, wounds caused by pride, by anger, by greed, by envy, by lust, by laziness, and by putting myself and other people and other things and before God, Jesus doesn't run away from us. And he runs towards us. And I think there is a temptation to say, you know, I'm too much. I'm too much for him. What I'm dealing with is too much. Um, but he's not afraid. He's not afraid of your vulnerability. He says, um, come to me. And when you look at the cross, um, here we have a 33-foot high cross. Um, when you look at this giant cross, when you look at Jesus on the cross, um, you see his arms are, are wide open. Um, it's a sign that he's open to you, that he's open to me, um, that he allows himself um, to be absolutely um, vulnerable on the cross. There's, there's no way that he could be more vulnerable than right where he is. And by his body language itself, he's communicating how open um, he is. Um, as he gives his life, as he gives us his love, um, as his heart is completely open. Um, sometimes I have prayed with the idea of where does healing come from? And I believe that healing comes from God the Father. Um, it comes in and, and through Jesus, um, through um, his sacred heart, um, through the wound at his side, um, the blood and the water that come out, um, through his last breath where he um, gives up his spirit, and then through the Holy Spirit. Um, that's the image that I have for healing. And so today is a special day where we remember um, that Jesus not only opened up his arms, um, but he allowed um, his hands to be um, nailed. He allowed his side, um, his heart itself, to be opened um, for us, for me, and for you. And really, the, the cross um, that we remember today, the cross perpetuates um, that healing. Um, that healing is made present here. Um, Jesus opened the door to healing, um, salvation, mercy, um, love, and it's opened right here. I'm um, in this chapel, in this place, on this Good Friday. I, I shared with you a, a poem that I wrote. Um, maybe you have it. If you don't have it, maybe you'll find it on the way out. And I want to just close um, with this. Um, I call this um, the gift of, of vulnerability. The gift of vulnerability is to open yourself even when afraid, um, to trust another despite your fear, to be honest, even when it is difficult, to reveal what is sacred within, um, to risk rejection 
or not being taken seriously, to love without knowing whether it will be received or reciprocated. All are dimensions of the gift of vulnerability. Jesus says to you and to me, will you open your heart to me? Will you receive what I have to give you? Will you show me the real you? Will you give me a chance to receive all that is you? Will you lay down your fear and trust me anyway? And we say, yes, yes, I will. And yes, I will, Jesus. There's also part of us that says, well, what if my heart is not received? What if I choose to remain closed and guarded? What if I allow fear to prevent the gift? What if I am unwilling to take the risk? What if being dishonest is easier for me? Then I will never discover the treasure and the power of vulnerability. Do you want to be loved and to love? Do you want to know and be known? Do you want to forgive and be forgiven? Do you want to give and be received? Do you want to know the Immaculate Heart of Mary? Do you want to encounter the Sacred Heart of Jesus? Then the gift of vulnerability is the means to that end. And brothers and sisters, Jesus was completely vulnerable with us. Um, it wasn't that he wasn't afraid, he overcame his fear. Um, he overcame the suffering, um, the rejection, um, the not knowing if he would be received. Um, he overcame it all um, as he chose um, to be completely vulnerable with you and with me. And so I ask you to, to pray this prayer with me here at the bottom of your, of the poem that I gave you. Let us pray, Jesus, I thank you for giving me an example of the gift of vulnerability. You opened yourself to me on the cross and I am forever grateful. You overcame your fear. You overcame pain and suffering out of love for me. May I learn from your example. May I allow myself to love and be loved, to know and to be known. May I have the strength to forgive and be forgiven. May I know the fruit, the blessing, and the gift of vulnerability. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. stand for our solemn intercessions. Let us pray for our holy church. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the holy church of God, that our God and Lord may be pleased to give her peace. To guard her and to unite her throughout the world and grant that the leading our life in tranquility and quiet may we glorify God God the Father Almighty Amen Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy 
that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the Pope. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the great order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for Lord's, Lord's holy church to govern uh, the, uh, the holy people of God. Amen. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all holy, um, for all orders and uh, degrees of faithfulness. Let us pray also for our bishop, uh, Bishop Dolan, and for all bishops, priests, deacons of the church, and uh, for the whole, uh, uh, for the whole faithful uh, people. Amen. Amen. Almighty, ever living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed. Hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for catechumens. Let us pray also for our catechumen that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their innermost hearts and unlock the gates of his mystery, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they, they, may, they, may, they too may be one with Christ uh, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful, with new offering, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the unity of all Christians. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live in truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Amen. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people. Let, uh, let us pray also for the Jewish people uh, uh, to, uh, to whom the Lord our God spoke uh, first, 
and then uh, <coughs> that uh, he gave them, uh, that he may grant them to advance in love uh, of his name and his faithfulness uh, to his covenant. Amen. 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 Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promise on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ. Let us pray also for uh, those who do not believe in, in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, that they uh, too may enter uh, on the way to a uh, way of salvation. Amen. Amen. Almighty ever living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be found and made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who who do not believe in God. Let us pray also uh, for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in uh, sincerity of heart, they may find uh, the way to God himself. Amen. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you, and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love in the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in, ga in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the, though, let us pray for those in public office. Let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Amen. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples and the assurance of peace and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those in tribulation. Let us pray, <coughs> dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of errors and banish disease and drive out hunger, unlock prisoners, loosen the fetters, granting, uh, <coughs> granting uh, to travelers uh, safety and uh, pilgrims reach uh, their return and uh, and health uh, to uh, the sick and the salvation to the dying amen. amen amen let us pray dearly beloved to god the father almighty that he may cleanse the world of all heirs banish disease Drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you. 
that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the protection of the unborn. Let us pray for the unborn that they may may that their right to life may be recognized and protected. Amen. 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 Almighty, ever-living God, you alone are the author and Lord of life. Protect our unborn brothers and sisters from the danger of abortion and give strength to work tirelessly that the right to life may always and everywhere be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You can please be seated. The Good Friday collection throughout the world um, is for the Holy Land. And um, if you aren't aware, um, Christians in the Holy Land um, have been decreasing for many years, and they're under great persecution there and um, great challenges there. And so um, the Good Friday collection throughout the whole world um, goes to the Christians in the Holy Land Deacon Dennis and I have been able to have Mass at some of the churches in the Holy Land. Um, there are real parishes there. There are people there that um, need our support. There are seminarians and there are children in schools. Um, so thank you for your generosity as we take up this collection um, for the Christians and Catholics of the Holy Land. Behold, behold, the wood of the cross on which is hung our salvation.
cross on which is hung our salvation. Behold, behold, the wood of the cross, on which is hung our salvation. As we move into this time of um, the veneration of the cross, um, we will come up um, just as we would at communion. You'll have an opportunity to venerate the cross. Um, venerate can mean a lot of different things. It can mean the sign of the cross, making the sign of the cross, kneeling, um, touching the cross, kissing the cross, um, bowing, whatever you're able to do. and. And whatever you feel led to do. Um, families can feel free to come up together and venerate the cross um, together. And so we enter into this um, special time of the veneration of the cross. a grain of wheat shall fall upon the ground and die it shall remain but a single grain and not give life behold behold the Oh, God, let us love. 
you take away the pain? If I found someone to blame, would it make my life seem easier? Alone, all my friends are asleep, and I can't find anyone to stay awake with me. my 
Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In just a moment, we will be having communion, and we'll have two lines, um, just like we did with the veneration of the cross. Um, if you are Catholic and prepared to receive communion, you can come up and receive communion. Um, if you're not Catholic or not prepared, you can cross your arms, and Deacon and I will give you a blessing. <clears throat> if you're not Catholic or not prepared, you can cross your arms, Deacon and I will give you a blessing. Um, if you're outside, um, you're also welcome to come forward for communion. And please, um, when you receive communion, um, consume it um, immediately. Thank you.
ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ. Preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Bow your heads for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. If that's the lead. 